sending my greetings to fellow members of the church. I hope you are all well and are warm this winter. I would like to open in prayer. May we close our eyes. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us the opportunity to praise your holy name during this pandemic. I thank you, Lord, for keeping us warm and safe during winter, as you have done so for many years. I pray, Lord, that the invisible en enemy may perish and that we praise your name forevermore. Amen. I will now hand over to the Chronicle of the Reading by Tando Mailuna. I greet you all in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Um, I know that you are well because if you are in Christ, you are well, you are guarded and you are safe. Today's Chronicle reading is titled Return to the Word and it reads as follows. Your eternal word, O Lord, stands firm in heaven. Oh, how I love your instructions. I think about them all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are my constant guide. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. This is from Psalms 119, verse 89, 97 to 98, and 105. The psalmist finds God's word and law very special. In today's text, there are eight characteristics of the word which stand out. God's word is eternal. It is something that we delight in. It gives meaning to our lives. It helps us resist temptations and keeps us from, evil, from every evil path. It is boundless. It gives us wisdom and insight. It is a light and a lamp for our path throughout life. It gives us joy. How important is your Bible to you? Are you as enthusiastic about, the, about it as the psalmist? One of the consequences of our busy schedules is that we read God's word superficially. Diligently study your Bible and then go out and live as the Bible requires you to live. Return to the word of God and watch positive results in your life. Please join me to say the, um, the declaration of faith. Lord, I praise you for your wonderful word. Thank you for the important part it plays in my life. Help me to find sufficient time every day to study your word. And please talk to me every day through your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, praise God. Welcome to our broadcast this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we are honored to have you join us this morning for our broadcast. And thank you so much to our youth ministry for opening this morning's program in prayer and um, also sharing the devotional text for today with everybody. Praise God. And uh, we are indeed excited with the... Um, lockdown levels being brought down to level three and we thank god for the door that is open for us once again to meet in the house of god we've just begun yesterday we've begun phase one of our sanitization uh, processes at our church premises and next weekend saturday we will uh, be conducting Phase two, which will be the final, finalization of the sanitization. And we trust God that God willing, next week Sunday, we'll be back in the sanctuary. Other than that, it will be the following Sunday. But we trust and we believe God that we'll be ready next week Sunday where we can all enjoy the presence of the Lord together as we all um, come together to worship the Lord. Now this morning... I want to share with you from the book of Philippians chapter 1. So get your Bible, get your pen, notebook, and uh, let's get ready for the Word of God this morning. And I want to share with you this morning on the subject of you are God's work in progress. Amen. You are God's work in progress. So if you can just maybe just tell the person next to you, look for somebody to just tell him, say, hey, God's not done with me yet. I'm God's work in progress. Praise God. Now, Philippians chapter 1, and I want to read from verses 3 to verse 6, but I want to um, um, focus specifically 
on verse number 6, which I would like you to highlight it when we get to that particular verse, as that will be the foundation of my brief message with you this morning. And um, the Apostle Paul writes to the Philippian church, and I believe it's very applicable to us today as well. And he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making request for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I want you to highlight that. Being confident. Confident of what? Of this very thing. And what is that thing? That he which has begun this good work in you will continue doing it until the day of Jesus Christ. Well, praise God. You've probably been asking a question uh, or it has probably, you know, went through your mind at some time or other. And you've probably asked yourself, is there a purpose with my life? What is God's will for my life? What is God's plan for my life? Or why have I been created? Why was I born? And I would like to share with you this morning and answer that question to you. And the, my answer to you is exactly in verse number 6. As the Apostle Paul says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will continue doing it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, the, the problem is, the issue is that many times in our lives, we live our day-to-day -day lives and we, there's so much that has happened in our lives, you know, uh, growing up, up till now and we base our lives very often on our past. And this is what we do. We come to God and we think we can serve God, you know, based on our previous life. And we focus everything on our past. We focus on our past mistakes. We focus on our past failures. We focus on our shortcomings. And that is not the way God intended it. The day you became born again, God took the story of your life that you once had and all the, all, you know, all the bad experiences, all the disappointments, all the hurts, all the failures. God took them and he removed them. And what he's given you now is a clean sheet. He's given you a new page. So now you live your life being written by God. God is the author of your life. And that's what Paul says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will continue doing it until the day of Christ Jesus. And that's the beauty of it, friends, is that your life is not being written by a man. God is not a man. You know, human beings have a tendency to begin something today, and then all of a sudden they decide that tomorrow, uh, you know, a uh, change of plan, change of thought, or, you know... Um, because of being tired or because of, you know, circumstances, things change, plans change. But praise God, God doesn't change. God's plans don't change. Amen. God's plans don't change. And the beauty of having God as your, uh, the one that is authoring your life is that, you know, he's not, he's not like a human author. A human author will write a story and as he's writing and you understand, then he gets out of ideas, and then he gets tired. And then what he does, he looks, oh, what a waste of time. So he squashes the piece of paper, he'll squash the page, and he'll throw it away. But not so with God. God is patiently writing the story of your life. And that's why you've got to be patient, because through patience, the Bible says, you will inherit the promises of God. Every promise that is written in the Word of God is yours by entitlement, by virtue of your new birth experience. Praise God. So God now has begun a good work in your life, 
And Paul says confidently, this is the confidence that Paul had. He said, being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will continue doing it until the day of Christ Jesus. Friends, God doesn't begin something that he cannot finish. Hallelujah. He, he doesn't begin something and he says, oh no, I can't finish it now. No, God is patient. So you've got to be patient and allow patience to have a perfect work in your life. Praise God. And I believe that God is busy uh, in your life and you've just got to receive it by faith this morning. What is God's plan for your life? What is God's plan for my life? The main plan that God has, the ideal plan that God has with the life of every born again individual is that they will be conformed to the image of his son Jesus Christ. That is the ideal plan and purpose with your life. Let me share something with you in the book of Galatians chapter number 4 and verse number 19. Praise God. Galatians 4 and verse 19. Paul writes and he says, My little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Until Christ is formed in you. In Romans, the book of Romans chapter number 8 and verse 29, Paul writes, For whom he foreknew, for whom God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Praise God. God and that when you the day you became born again you can identify with what Paul says in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 he says I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise God. That is the life that we live now. A life of faith in Christ Jesus. A life in faith that I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified. I died to the world. And now that I'm born again, now that I'm risen with Christ, I live in Christ to the glory of God the Father. Praise God. And God has begun a good work in your life. The important thing for you to remember is that it is no longer you who lives, but it is Christ who lives in you. Hallelujah. I shared with you last week, Christ, the word Christ translated means the anointed one and his anointing. The anointed one and his anointing now resides within you. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10, the beautiful scripture, one of my favorites. The word of God says, for we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God already planned and purposed that you would walk in the ways of God in Christ Jesus. It is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who now lives in you and I. And it is God who is busy day by day. He, Christ is being formed in you. When you're reading the Word of God, you are being transformed into the form and image of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That now when you live your life, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're facing. When you live your life now, you don't live your life based on your past mistakes. You've overcome your past. That is my word to you this morning. You've overcome your past. Don't allow your past to determine your future. You have a glorious future in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 3, the Bible, Paul, uh, uh, God speaking to young Samuel, he says, when I begin... I will make an end. It's 1 Samuel 3 verse 12. God was speaking about Eli, the house of Eli. But he says, when I begin, I will also make an end. Hallelujah. God doesn't begin something that he can't finish. God has begun a good work in your life. So friend, you hold on to the word of God and you be patient. 
because God is going to come through for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love Isaiah chapter number 46. Isaiah 46 and something awesome that I want to share with you this morning. Isaiah 46 and verses 9 through to 10. The Lord says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Hallelujah. The Bible says God delights in the prosperity of his people. It is God's pleasure to give you the Holy Spirit. It is God's pleasure to give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You've got to pursue spiritual gifts. You've got to pursue Christ. Pursue the things of God. I'm reminded of the of the um, um, John the Baptist. In John 3 verse 30, he says, He, Christ, must increase and I must decrease. And I think there's a, there's a powerful statement that is made by a woman of God by the name of Catherine Kuhlman, who said, He is most holy who has most of Christ in him. So in all your pursuing, in all your pursuing in life, pursue Christ. Let Christ be the goal. Let Christ be the mark. Let Christ be the prize for which we strive. Let nothing of the earth be something that you're striving or pushing towards. Put, press into Christ. Press into God. And, you know, put on the new man created in Christ Jesus in holiness. Hallelujah. That is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that is God's plan and God's purpose with your life, is that you conform to the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. And friend, you have been given the Spirit of God. If you haven't received the Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you. Make, make that your mark today. Make that your desire today. You can receive it by faith. Last week, we were, you know, we were celebrating or commemorating uh, uh, the day of Pentecost. And, you know, it's so important that every believer is filled with the Holy Spirit. He is the power of God. He is our divine connection with God. And I want to encourage you this morning, if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, you can receive Him by faith. Ask the Lord Jesus in faith this morning and say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I need your Spirit. Fill me with your Spirit. John the Baptist said, "He, it is He who is baptized. John the Baptist made a statement. He says, I truly baptize you with water, but there comes one after me whose sandal strap I'm unworthy to untie. It is he who baptizes you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now I'm talking about the anointing of the Holy Ghost. There's an anointing that comes upon you as a child of God when you receive the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You can go forth in life now. You're no longer looking at the pages of your past. You're looking at the pages that are before you, which is the Word of God. You see the Word of God unfolding in your life. And that's my encouragement to you this morning, is that he who has begun a good work in you will continue doing it until the day of Christ Jesus. How is he doing it? He's doing it by his sovereign grace. The grace of God is sufficient for you. I'm here to share with you this morning. It doesn't matter your pitfalls. It doesn't matter your shortcomings. The grace of God is sufficient for you. The strength of God is made perfect in your weaknesses. It is Christ Jesus himself who bore our infirmities. I want to share with you this morning, O oh child of the Most High God, clothe yourself with Christ this morning. Pursue Jesus Christ this morning. Let Christ be the center of your life. Let Christ be the goal of your life. Wherever you are, Christ is there. In your workplace, Christ is there. If you will just submit your will to his will and allow the risen Christ to live through you, 
Allow Him to live through you. You'll see the changes happening wherever you are. It will happen in your workplace. It will happen in your school. It will happen in your business. It will happen in your home. It will happen in your nation. You just come on. You got to listen. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on to Jesus. Make Jesus the ultimate mark. That you are pressing on towards. Because when you do that friend. When you allow. When, when Jesus is all that you desire. Everything else in your life will fall into place. Hallelujah. Your life may seem this morning like a puzzle. You may be puzzled with what's happening around you. Or what's happening in your life. But if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life. Your life will continue to. To be an imperfect puzzle. You'll never be complete without him. It is Jesus who completes you. It is Jesus who makes you new. It is in Jesus that you are given a new page. That you are given a new page. It's an exciting life. It's a glorious life that God has laid before you. And yes, God has begun this good work in you. And he will continue doing it until the day of Christ Jesus. God will not give up on you. God will not fail you. Hallelujah. Though you may fail God, God is a faithful God. He will not fail you. Hallelujah. Trust God. Believe God. God is bigger than your heart. Hallelujah. God is bigger than your heart today. And that is my word to you this morning, is to pursue Christ Jesus. And to know that your life is being written by God. Praise God. It doesn't matter the experiences that you're facing in your life. Because God is the author of your life. And as long as he is the author, you can be certain that yes, although tough times and difficult times will come. But because you know the author, the author who is authoring the book of your life. Because you know him. Every bad experience is turning and working for your good. Romans 8.28 And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who have been called according to his plan and purpose. Praise God. You know the author of your life. So your life is not a mess. Your life is not a, in a state of confusion. God is bringing order to your life, hallelujah, by his sovereign word. So that's my encouragement to you this morning, is to go for the word of God and allow this word to be written on the tablet of your heart, meditate on the word of God. And as you do so, as you do so, as you do so, you grow in Christ Jesus. You start to see Jesus in your life. You start to see Jesus in you. Things that you desired to do before that, you know, you didn't really desire. You find all of a sudden they, they no longer interest you. Why? Because of Christ in you. It is Jesus Christ in you. Hallelujah. He gives your life meaning. He gives your life purpose. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what you're facing, friends. He who has begun a good work in you will continue doing it until the day of Christ Jesus. So don't go by what people are saying. Don't go by what the world is saying. Hallelujah. Don't go by what people are saying and the opinions of men. Yes, people look at you on the outside. But the Bible does not say he who began a good work on the outside of you. It says he who began a good work on the inside of you. He who began a good work in you. So where's the work? The work is in you. The good work is in you. So you got to live your life from the inside out. That's how God works. He changes your heart. And once your heart is changed, everything about you begins to change. That's why Jesus says, He who believes in me, as the scripture says, from deep within his being will flow rivers of living waters. Hallelujah. It's the living word of God in the heart of the child of God. That God by his spirit has engraved on the tablet of your heart. As you meditate on the word and you, and you dwell in the word. You'll find all of a sudden the word will begin to flow out of you. And bring life to things that were dead. It will bring healing where there's sickness. It will bring strength where there's weakness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. And that is my message to you and my word to you this morning. It is not over yet until God says it's over. The author has not said it's over as yet. So you just keep on keeping on. You keep on pressing on because God is about to come through for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you haven't received the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity this morning to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior this morning by saying a simple prayer with me, a prayer of faith. And just as I said, if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, ask the Lord this morning in faith and receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, just close your eyes as we pray this morning and you receive the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, according to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the price you paid for me at Calvary's cross. Wash me in your precious blood. I thank you now. I receive right now your free gift of eternal life. And I declare from this moment on that I am born again. I'm a child of the Most High God. Lord Jesus, being born again now, I ask you to please baptize me in the Holy Spirit. I invite the Holy Spirit into my life. I thank you now. By faith I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in my life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will teach me, lead me, and guide me into all truth. Use me for the glory of God, for the glory of Christ Jesus. In Jesus' blessed name, Amen, 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 amen. Well, praise God. Thank you so much for joining us. If you've prayed that prayer, the details are appearing on your screen right now. Please connect with us. Share with us what God has done for you. And uh, send us your prayer request. We pray for you often. We love you very, very much. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo saying, God bless you. Before I leave you, stretch your hands towards the screen as I release the final blessing. The Lord bless you, child of God. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And the Lord cause the glory of his presence to be upon you always. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and always. In Jesus' blessed name, God's people said, Amen, Amen. Praise God. Well, this is Pastor Ricardo. Until next time, keep walking by faith. We love you very much. We thank God for you. Praise God. Goodbye.